happy 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 sabbath to you brethren welcome to another fired up episode tonight is about rest and relaxation but also to ponder on the things of god in today's episode we'll be counting down the days till we stop eating manna by the grace of god by virtue of faith hallelujah the scripture reading is taken from joshua 5 verse 1 through 12 And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make thee sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way as they came forth out of Egypt, they had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, unto whom the Lord sware that he would not show them the land, which the Lord sware unto their fathers that he would give us. A land that floweth with milk and honey, and their children whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised, because they had not been circumcised by the way. And it came to pass, when they had done circumcising all the people, that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month of even, at even in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the selfsame day. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Here endeth a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying thanks be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Earlier in the series, we spoke about the wilderness experience. We spoke about when the dream or the vision that hasn't materialized as yet, what it means, you know, what the Lord is doing by bringing us through a wilderness experience, right? And we see here in this scripture that the Lord was indeed purging the children of Israel. He removed all of the Egyptians and all because if we read in Exodus, it said a mixed multitude came forth out of the land of Egypt. It wasn't just Israelites that came out of the land of Egypt. No, 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 no. There were some Egyptians that came out of the land of Egypt with the Israelites There were some that saw the hand of God based on the plagues that plagued Egypt. And they wanted to follow after this God. They wanted to, you know, see what else this God could do. So they decided that they were going to journey with their brethren. And some of them genuinely loved the Israelites and wanted to, you know, continue to journey with them. So, you know, it was a mixed multitude that came forth. But we see here that the only 
persons that were left at the end of the 40 years of wilderness were the children of Israel, not the original ones that went through the Red Sea, not the original ones that were in slavery, but the ones that were born in the wilderness, okay? So these are the byproduct of the wilderness. These are the byproduct of the times where God was reigning supreme in the wilderness, where he was the ultimate source of provision, where Without God, they would literally suffer hunger because there were times in the wilderness where there was no water, where the Lord would tell Moses to speak to the rock and it would, you know, bring forth water. There were times in the wilderness where there was no bread. There were no, no, there were no sheep, no animals. And the Lord would rain manna from heaven. There were times in the wilderness where they said, we are tired of manna. We want flesh. We want meat to eat. And God would rain down quails from the sky. They would get birds to eat. They would get the flesh of the quails. There was times in the wilderness where they grumbled and complained about heat or they complained about different things. The Lord gave them a pillar of fire by night to keep them warm and to give them light. And the Lord led them by, you know, a whirlwind in the day. They, they were to keep them cool during the heat of the desert during the day and, you know, the pillar to keep them warm by night. So, you know, in other words, every single need the Lord supplied according to his riches in glory. Every single need. And now they were coming to the end of living from hand to mouth, from God's hand to their mouth. And they were coming into a period of their lives where they were now going to have to plow the land, where they, they, were, they were now going to have to reap from land that was sown. They were now going to have to gather from trees and they were now going to have to rear their sheep. They were going to the land of Canaan, the land that floweth with milk and honey. They were now going to taste and see even more that the Lord is good. This is a story of maturity. There is a time when we are babies where we desire you know, the sincere milk of the word where we need to have the scriptures broken down for us so that we can digest it in our spirits. And we see this with the children of Israel. Fresh out of slavery, they were spiritual babies. They didn't really have that relationship with God and they didn't know how to sustain themselves. They didn't even know how to fight. They didn't even know how to fight. They literally didn't know how to fight. They didn't know how to do anything for themselves. Themselves. If God had brought them out of Egypt and straight into the land, they wouldn't know what to do with it. So they had to go through that spiritual maturing phase of their life where there were some things that the Lord would chisel off of them. There were some things that the Lord would mold them a little bit more in this area, rear them up in this area. They went like that for years under the tutelage of the lord under the stewardship of the holy spirit are we to allow ourselves to grow we're supposed to be growing and evolving under the tutelage of the holy spirit and under the tutelage of our pastors and teachers the lord will send us teachers after our own hearts in the ages of our spiritual youth when we are basically babies but there will come a time where we won't be eating manna anymore, where we won't be drinking milk anymore. There will come a time where we'll be plucking from the old corn of the land, where we will be chunking off the big pieces of meat of the word of God. I remember when the disciples were asking Jesus if he wasn't hungry and he said, I have meat to eat of that you do not know about. Hallelujah. Hey, glory be unto the Father. Hallelujah. There is coming a time where the Holy Spirit will come to you in vision, where he will speak to you in the 
ear and he will say to you just like peter rise kill and eat and we're not talking about meat that you eat that fills the physical human stomach we're talking about getting up now that we are fortified by the word of God, now that our spirit man is built up, now that our feet is shod with the preparation of the gospel, now that we have mastered some of the fruits of the spirit and are currently working, oh God, hallelujah, on some other things, cutting down the works of the flesh by faith through the power of the Holy Ghost. That we should be going around to tell our testimonies, to say... Come, see a man. It is no longer time for us to shy away from spreading the word, from making the gospel of Jesus Christ go viral. It's no longer time for us to lock our lips when we see our brethren going astray, when we see them latching on to the things which will have the clutches of Satan wrapped around their necks. No, 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 no. It is time for us to reach our hand in the fire and to pull back by the strength of God's right hand and by the authority of Jesus Christ. It is time for us to get up and stand on the word of God. It is time for us to understand the times and the signs that we're living in. To recognize that the second coming of Jesus Christ is soon and very soon. That we cannot sit down and keep pity party. That if we fall down, get up. If you're down, you don't stay down. You get up and walk by faith, not by sight. You get up and continue to profess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Because we're in an era where there are many baby Christians who have been walking around the mountain for 40 years, 30 years, 10 years. There are many Christians who are still struggling after 50 years being baptized with the same sin that they started out struggling from day one because they are still eating manna. They have not yet started to rise, kill and eat. They haven't started to chunk off the big pieces of meat. They still have in their spiritual baby teeth. They still have to be fed milk. We have to get up and realize that if we want to stop eating manna, we have to develop the, the, the ability to digest the meat of the word. And that comes through prayer and supplication. That comes through not making excuses for when you slip up. But saying, Lord, here I am. I accept grace. We are no longer under the law, but we are under grace, which means that God's mercy is extended to us. Chewing meat is recognizing that God in all his mercies really sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. That we don't have to be wrapped up in bondage anymore. That we don't have to have the gates of heaven shut on us and be shut behind the bars of hell. We don't have to do that. We don't have to live in fear. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Chewing meat is recognizing that you don't need to argue with anybody. Tit for tat, you don't need to take revenge. Because God is a consuming fire and the Lord says vengeance is his. Chewing meat is recognizing that walking by faith doesn't mean that the next step is there. Walking by faith sometimes looks like the step forms when you put out your foot. That is what it is. Stop coddling yourself spiritually or you won't grow. You'll be stuck eating manna for another 40 years. As for me and my house, we ain't about that life. Spiritual growth and maturity is important. It's important to your calling that you mature. But in order to mature, you have to, you know, relinquish your control. Your control over your image has to be relinquished. You have to be prepared to have your character smeared. Jesus went through it. They called him Beelzebub. <laughs> they said that he was preaching by the authority of demons and devils. Imagine telling the son of God 
the one you claim to be looking for your Messiah, that he is come under, under divination, that he is come under authority of devils. Imagine spitting on the one who died to save you. Imagine spitting on the light that came to bear witness of God's truth. His character was smeared. He took on not only sin nature, but he came among the poorest of the poor. He didn't come with prestige in spite of the fact that he is a king. Not only the prince of peace, but the king of kings and lord of lords. The conquering lion came so humble. He came humble as a lamb. The lamb that was slain for our sins. Hallelujah. Chewing meat is recognizing that this is not about us. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about everybody and their mama. No, 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 no. It is about the Lord and Savior. All of this is from him. And we'll go back to him. Our breath, these bodies will go back to the earth. We own nothing. Nothing we came here with, nothing we go back with. And that is the reason why we have to cling to our Lord. Because he is the only way for us to leave this earth and attain something. He's the only thing to look forward to in this life and beyond. Maturity is going to look like obedience to every word of God and every will of God. Whether or not you understand what it means. The Lord said to Joshua to make knives. Joshua made knives. The Lord said to Joshua, circumcise the men of Israel the second time. The second time, these men were never circumcised before. So why is it saying the second time? This is speaking to... This is speaking to giving them another chance. Another chance to serve him as a nation. Though they were not the physical persons that were circumcised before their fathers were. And their fathers failed in a sense where they complained and grumbled along the way through the wilderness. They made idols and worshipped. They cursed God. They chastised Moses with all of their constant bickering, constant complaining. They drove Moses to such anger that he struck the rock when God told him to speak to it. And for his anger and swift disobedience, it cost him entering the promised land. They had gotten so out of control, out of hand with all the foolishness that they were doing. One minute that God would show up for them in a great way. Next minute they're doubting God. One minute God would do mighty miracles. Next minute they would be doing foolishness. So it grieved God to make them. It grieved the Lord seriously. And he said, you know what? They shall not see the land because these people are cruel. They're, they're just wicked overall. So they won't see the land. I'll give it to their children. So even though they didn't get to see the land, their children did, which meant that their blood got another chance to be redeemed for all of the provocations that they did to God. Their children got to be redeemed. Because usually, if we read the commandments, you would see that there would be curses unto the third and fourth generation of those that hate God and mercy unto thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. And the children of Israel broke every single commandment you could think of <laughs> during the wilderness. Circumcision was a sign of the covenant between God and Abraham and it was passed down to every single one of his descendants, all the male children particularly, on the eighth day would be circumcised um, after their birth and usually this would, you know, 
be used to represent God's saving grace. Because if we look throughout all of the Old Testament, you see where for sin to be atoned for, there will be shedding of blood. So we get the concept that atonement comes through shedding of blood. Blood is a way to seal a covenant. And you see that the children of Israel stayed in the camp in Gilgal until they healed. They stayed until they healed. They made up in their minds that no longer will I be uncircumcised, but I will enter into the covenant with the God that my parents had covenant with, even though they didn't keep the covenant. And even though we're not sure we're going to keep the covenant, we want to enter into Canaan land and we want to do so by obedience. We can't do this without the Lord. So they had to come to a point where they had to sit down and allow for themselves to be circumcised. They had to submit to the will of God. Because at any point in time, it's not just a cultural thing. I would believe that all of us are free moral agents. So if just like how they could, their fathers decided to get together and created a golden calf, they could have decided a group of them to get together and say, hey, Joshua, son of Nun, you better not come near with that, with that knife or else. You understand? But no, they submitted to the word of Joshua, to the word of the Lord that was decreed and, you know, instructed by Joshua. We have to come to a place where we fully surrender to God. If we cannot surrender to God, we will never grow and we will never stop eating manna. We have to come to a place where we are willing to go through our fiery trials, recognizing that it is to stretch our faith, to stretch us as persons so that we can expand our ministry. It is a means for us to be refined by the hand of the refiner, which is God in heaven. It says that they abode until they were whole. The whole they're speaking about healing there are some things in our lives that we go through. I don't know about y'all, but I have experienced some traumatic things in my lifetime, as young as I am. And I recognize that the longer I allowed for it to fester, the more it hurt my ministry. Because especially with when I struggled with unforgiveness, it was hard for me to teach the gospel. It was hard for me to share the gospel when I struggled with unforgiveness. When I was dealing with, you know, constantly breaking down, it was hard for me to tell somebody be not afraid because I had anxiety. So I had to sit at the feet of Jesus and heal. Just like they had to sit in Gilgal before they could go over Jordan. They had to sit at Gilgal until they were whole. We have to sit at the feet of Jesus Christ and allow for him to soothe our wounds, allow for him to pluck out the bitter roots from our lives. We have to sit at the feet of Jesus Christ and allow for him to show us the fits of rage that we go through and how we can tame our tongue and how we can keep our flesh under subjection to the will of God. Many people in our churches have been abused and because people have been hurt by church, they don't want to have anything to do with it. And in that way, we can lose ministers, we can, use, we can lose future evangelists rather, we can lose future teachers, future counselors, future prophetics. There are many ministries that are wasting away in hurt wounds of the heart that are festering that all it would take was sitting at the feet of jesus and allowing the pus to pour out the hardness of heart to soften by the word there's so many things but let us not forget that it is the self same day it is the self same day that you begin to pluck 
the old corn that you will stop eating manna. It is when you take the bull by the horns and decide, I must grow in Christ. I will not stay here for the rest of my Christian journey, but I must come up hither in the Lord. When you decide that you must come up higher in the spirit, when you decide that if I used to do two-day fasting, I'm going to try three-day. If I used to do three, I used, I'm going to try five. If I used to do four and drink water, you know, to quench my thirst whenever I would feel really, really dehydrated, then I go dry. If I used to pray for 30 minutes, I'm praying for an hour, two hours, so long as, you know, I'm able to make the time. I used to pray at 12 noon, now I'm waking up at 12 midnight to catch up on the benefits of praying in that watch. I used to only read my Bible in my closet. And now I'm able to pass out cards sharing the good news of Jesus Christ on it to encourage a few souls. Eating meat is learning to control your urge to fist somebody in the face when they're telling lies on you. It's not easy, but it's doable. Just as how meat is not always tender, but it's chewable. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Happy Sabbath once more. Take care and God bless.